Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to attempt to break the sound barrier using only recoil power from cannons. Now in the history of my channel I've broken the sound barrier in the air, I've broken it on land, and I've even broken it underwater kind of. But I have not tried it with just the recoil from cannon power because until today I really wasn't sure how to go about doing it because there's some limitations with the cannons. I want to make something really clear at the start about what I mean by cannon power. Because it's not that hard to break the sound barrier by using cannons, but there's a particular way that I want to use the cannons. One thing I'm pretty sure you can do is just make all the cannons shoot at the ground and create a giant explosion which propels your seat pretty fast. And if I just keep adding more cannon power to that, we're probably gonna break the sound barrier. But that is not using the recoil of the cannons. That is actually using the explosions of the cannons. So as you can see, that gets me up to like 200 or something, which actually isn't really that much. So I don't wanna use the cannons in that way. I wanna use the cannons in this way which you can see has much less power, but it should theoretically allow us to have a non-self-destructive vehicle that can actually maintain its speed. The other more obvious limitation to this is um, I don't wanna use any glitches. There's like a no friction glitch that you can use to have like no air resistance at all, which is just makes it really easy to break the sound barrier. But um, I wanna do this the legit way or as at least as legit as I can make it. So to start off, I'm gonna try to do this with a land vehicle. I just think it's gonna be easier to work with than trying to actually get up in the air every time I wanna test this thing out. So let's just do a super, super basic test and just put a cannon on the back of a little car like this. And let's see what kind of speed we can get up to. Let's check the aerodynamics on this thing. You can see all the aerodynamics are actually pretty good with this particular layout here. So how much speed does a single cannon get us? Okay, that is not encouraging, but you can see that every time the cannon shoots, we actually get a little bit more speed because we're able to keep rolling with velocity from the previous uh, cannon firing. And at some point due to the air resistance, we are gonna reach the terminal velocity and I think we're nearly there. Oh, we broke 80, so we still are going. You know what, this is actually promising, a promising start. But the big problem with these cannons that I was anticipating is I can't just keep making this vehicle longer like this because then the cannons are just gonna blow each other up. So if I want to add more cannons, I cannot add them in the firing path of any other cannons. And that inherently means making our vehicle profile wider giving us more air resistance and making us therefore much more difficult to propel through the air. Which is why I feel like the no friction glitches would just be cheating for this kind of challenge because I think the whole part of this challenge, the whole, the main portion of what makes this challenging is trying to organize a vehicle that doesn't get too big to where you get too much diminishing returns on your cannon power. So for something like this, getting these really bright green arrows is going to be crucial. Ooh, this looks like a cool vehicle actually. All right, so now let's see what happens. Is this, we have four times as much cannon power and already we've broken our speed record. We were at like 87 before. Wait, what happened? How, how did that end up happening? That, there's no way that should happen. Wait, well, how is that happening? Why are they going down? Why, why are they hitting so close as we go faster? You would figure as we go faster, well, it really shouldn't make a difference, but the faster we go, the more it, it ends up exploding us? Oh, wow, yeah, you can see the faster we go, the more, the closer the explosions end up happening. <gasps> this is bad. That means I'm gonna have to make my vehicle taller, which is terrible for this concept. So if I move all of my wheels down by one, maybe that'll give us the ground clearance that we need. Let's hope for the best here. All right, the explosions are getting closer. No, this is going to ruin everything. This shouldn't happen. Okay, let's try something different. Let's program these so that they shoot staggered from each other. Then we'll have a more constant velocity rather than this um, burst and relax, burst and relax kind of motion we're doing. So to keep symmetry, I'll have the outside ones go and then I'll have the inside ones go in between the outside ones. So each burst is gonna be less powerful, but as you can see, uh, it pretty much the exact same thing happens. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm gonna do an experiment and get rid of this top one. Maybe that was giving an inconsistency to the, uh, the, the center of thrust. And maybe that's what's causing them to go closer. Wow, I don't know why that, I don't know why that ends up happening. Yeah, around 120 miles per hour is where we end up uh, breaking. Hey, watch, once it gets to the two, once you see the two, yep, the two is, is just gone. There is one potential solution to this, but it is just gonna add some extra complexity that might affect the aerodynamics of this thing. But um, I'm gonna add a bunch of steering hinges here and we're just gonna have them at the slightest angle that they can possibly have. So now, hopefully that upwards angle will prevent them from hitting too close to us and allow us to keep this constant velocity forward. So let's see if we can break 120 now. Hopefully that angle doesn't interfere aerodynamically. How? They're, the cannons are literally shooting up. This is not the problem I was expecting to run into. I'm just gonna do 25 degrees. So there's no questioning. Oh, that's terrible though. The downwards force is absolutely terrible, isn't it? Well, let's see how fast we can go with this. And if we end up exploding against the ground with this, look how far away those explosions are. If we end up exploding against the ground on this, there's definitely something wrong with this game. All right, but I gotta break 120 and it doesn't look like I'm gonna be getting there with this angle. So I'm going to attach these wheels further back like this. Looks weird, but I think this, uh could be a potential solution. Oh, that angle is too extreme. It still bounces our wheels into the ground. Was not expecting that. Clearly we went too much on that angle. Let's just try 10 degrees. All right, we broke. I was gonna say we broke 120, but then somehow we end up ex exploding again. All right, you know what? This is telling me that maybe ground vehicle is not the way to go. If I cannot get past 120 miles per hour without blowing myself up against the ground explosion, I'll just, I'll just be safer in the air at this point. Like, look at that inconsistency once we break 100. So if we have to get into the air, we're gonna need a place to take off from. And I think that this is going to be the place to take off from. We can get our initial speed without exploding and then get into the air and pick up that speed, I hope. But adding wings onto this thing is definitely going to um, complicate things. All right, so I've added some tail fins and some fins in the front that are hopefully gonna allow me to control my pitch. I don't have any roll control. I'm gonna hope I don't need it. Let's see if I can even take off with this minimal amount of wings here. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is not a good sign. All right, I'm making the risky move of moving these tail fins down onto the wheels. It looks like they're gonna collide with the cannons, but as you can see, it doesn't seem to be happening. So I'm gonna really hope that that doesn't change in the air. And now I'm just gonna duplicate these cannons up to here. All right, now we definitely have a lot more power. Okay, controlling it though is another issue. We are very, very back heavy right now, so I do have to... All right, that probably hit the tail. You know what, these wheels don't even need to be that far back anymore anyway, because we're no longer counteracting the downwards angle of the uh, cannons. We're going straight on now, so this should actually be better. But right now I do not have any more uh, tail uh, vertical stabilizer, but let's see how this feels now. All right, well, I... This is so weird. I was gonna say I broke 120 again, but as soon as I break 120, the cannons just self-destruct. What is with the 120 speed limit? Ready? Watch the... As soon as I go to 120, what's going on here? This wasn't my intended design for the final product. This was just me testing out how it functions, and I'm a little bit concerned about these results, but let me try the design I had in mind and see if it actually curbs this issue that I'm having. Okay, so this is my idea here. This is hopefully a modular, I can just expand this indefinitely, but let me put some wheels on this thing so it's not going to uh, fall apart at the beginning. So you can see all of the cannons, oh boy, they're kind of colliding a little bit. I may need to add one more block of space in between, but all of the cannons are aiming backwards and they miss each other, fortunately. So hopefully, this is going to be something that'll allow me to get some uh, forward momentum without the cannons shooting each other and also be able to stack them in a line. Add some stabilization to the back. And now let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Okay. So far, not off to a great start controllability wise. But let's see what happens if I go back to staggering the fire rate. Here we go, it should be more gradual, steady increase now. 
And we shot our tail already. You know what? Fine. I'm gonna give this thing a smaller tail. Please don't kill yourself. Oh, what is wrong with this thing? <sighs> Let me do the obvious and add a little bit of space for these cannons. If I can break 120 without exploding, I feel like we've made a massive breakthrough. Come on, come on, 100. Oh. This is rough. You know what? Let's add more cannons. It ends up being as simple as that to just extend this thing with some more cannons and then add the back onto it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, this is not promising. This is really, really not promising. What? Okay, I have to do an experiment though. What about on a straightaway? Is this now ground compatible? This is so sketchy. 100, here we go, 120. Okay, we broke 120 that time. Okay, we are consistently over 120 that time. Let's go back to the test map. This has some promise. All right, let's see how this feels. If I can break 130 without exploding, I will be very happy. 125, come on. It's the wind resistance. The wind resistance of these things is definitely a problem. We have reached our terminal velocity. All right, let me do an interesting experiment here. And let me make it so that all of the cannons fire. Ooh, at exactly the same time. That looks kind of, that looks kind of pretty. All right, now let's see what kind of, with a more explosive velocity. There's 130, I saw 130. We've reached a higher velocity. This might actually be stronger than the more consistent staggered firing. We have to get this thing to 770 miles per hour. We're at 140, which is a decent fraction of the way there. I think a big issue that we've introduced is actually putting these gaps in between the cannons because now there is a separate aerodynamic force affecting each cannon. Whereas when they were right next to each other, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the proximity of the cannons actually cancels out the dead space in between them. But here's one experiment I wanted to do. If I just have better aerodynamics at the front, is that going to help us break past 140 more consistently? All right, this doesn't really seem to have that big of an impact. Is adding more cannons going to change the results? Whoa, the speed is doing weird things now. It's like pausing at numbers instead of just going up and down. Oh, there, okay. And now that I said that, it's like, oh, whoops. I reminded it how it's supposed to work. All right, but we do break 140 now, barely. So we have an aerodynamics issue. We have reached terminal velocity. Okay, so here is my response to this. Delete everything I've done, except this first section right here, and rework this cannon system so that the cannons actually get their own individual aerodynamic protection. All right, so this is what I'm looking at now for a self-contained cannon system. So you can see, now they lean back like this, and hopefully this is gonna cut down dramatically on the air resistance. All right, so I have eight sets of cannons. This looks like, doesn't this just look like it's gonna blow me up? This whole looks like it's gonna blow me up. Let's see how fast we can go with it though. It's so cool, this is the best angle for sure. All right, there's 130, there's 140, there's 150, there's 160, this is way better. 70. We need to get up to 770. This isn't, I don't know if this is possible. I don't like, now that I'm seeing the returns I'm getting on adding some cannon power to this thing. Okay, and now that happened too. We might have a new speed limit with this design. All right, I've doubled the cannon power. We are definitely not gonna get double the speed though for this. 170. I think 170 is our new speed limit with this design. It really seems like once we get to 170, there's 60, there's 70, here we go. Man, that is unfortunate. All right, one more attempt at the staggered firing, see if this gets us any different results. We're probably still gonna explode at 170 though. Four, five, six, even sooner. Okay, so I've done a little bit of experimenting and I've completely changed the design and I don't know if this is going to help or hurt yet, but um, with all of this exploding at our 170 speed limit against the ground, I feel like we need to get off the ground again. So I've actually lined the whole bottom of this with wings, like a carpet that can hopefully fly through the air. Uh, I had to make ourselves wider just a little bit and put the cannons uh, slightly farther apart to accommodate the wings in the center. But my plan is hopefully, 
that once we get enough speed, I will be able to use my front control surfaces. You can see they're trying. They're trying to lift off. Come on. All right, hold on. Huh? There we go. There we go. We kind of look like a crazy leviathan flying through the air, don't we? Um, but I'm hoping that this is going to allow me a little bit more freedom with how much I can do with cannons. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know yet what to expect with this. Um, I'm still kind of not going any faster, but I've simplified my cannon system down and everything else down so that... Oh no, I thought I had much more complexity left, but I don't. I'm just gonna add as many cannons as I can, and I think... Yep, that's it. I can only add two more sections. So this is literally my maximum complexity. I cannot add really any more cannons at this rate. So let's see how fast this gets me now. Probably not much faster. Oh, and we're already exploding. I can't even get off the ground. Oh, man. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I got lift up. I had to add a little bit more to the wings up in the front. But now... Whoa! Even my air speed limit is 170. That was unexpected. As soon as I broke 170 in the air, I exploded? Please tell me that was some type of fluke. All right, there we go. Successful liftoff. Keep an eye on that speed. 170. And we're exploded. All right, I have an interesting idea. I'm actually going to cut the number of cannons in half. And I just want to see if anything changes about our speed or our limit or anything along those lines. All right. Oh, my back wheels exploded. That actually could be good. Just the wheels exploded. All right, one. All right, we still explode. As a last ditch effort, I just decided to see if there was a cannon right on top of another cannon. If maybe the hitbox of the projectile wasn't going to be until a certain distance. But nope, it's instant explosion. So there's no stacking cannons in front of each other. You have to clear out the uh, the muzzle of the cannon. You cannot have anything obstructing the projectile. I think that is the biggest limitation to this. The fact that pretty much every cannon has to be its own isolated object. It makes it virtually impossible to lay them out in a way where they're not all just stacking up friction and air resistance preventing us from reaching a max speed. And not only that, but then there's that weird speed limit effect where the explosions seem to no longer go away from our vehicle once we reach a certain limit. I don't know if there's another way to do this without resorting to a friction, uh, no friction glitch or a no air resistance glitch or any type of other game exploits. I don't know if there's a way to legitimately generate enough cannon power to overcome the air resistance to create a sonic boom. Because remember, sonic booms only exist with air resistance. You will not create a sonic, a sonic boom unless you're actually pushing air off the front of your craft. So if anybody in the Trailmakers community can come up with a legitimate way to create a supersonic vehicle using only the recoil power from the cannons, I would love to see that because right now, I feel like it's an impossible task, and I think this is the farthest that I'm going to be able to get. About 170 miles per hour. So if you are somebody or know somebody who has managed to complete this task in a legitimate way, uh, let me know because I would love to show that creation in a video or a couple of creations if it's more than one person that used different techniques. But until then, I'm going to call the recoil-powered Sonic Boom uh, probably an impossible challenge. So I hope you enjoyed this experiment, and if you did, you'll probably enjoy some more stuff on the channel that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.